Konami's Jekyll for the NES, released in 1988. It's a direct port of the original arcade classic Top Gunner. Now before we begin, my most honorable regards go out to Kelly Luiso, Craig James R, Pete Robot Sex Music Hegarty, Danny Diamond Machine Pryor, Lord Biffle Cup and Magic Mike, that's Shubinsky and Notton respectively, Liz Totsky and Naya, Aaron Stapish from Retro Liberty, 8-Bit Eric, Some Call Me Johnny Ortiz and his brother Elliot, Rob Hall and Josh Allen from Boston Retro Gamers, Michael D'Angelo from The Old School Game Show, Sam Mulligan, Justin DeLucia, Dave White and Joe Redifer from GameSack, James Rolfe and motherfucker Mike Matei from Cinemassacre, Matt Lister and Ian Bergeson from New Hampshire, Rob Patillo, aka The Quiet D Road Steamer from California, Astrologic Guzel, Emily Farola, Baby Grandma Cardoso, and finally, Glentai Dubois. With that out of the way, onto the game's story. It revolves around the title, 4-Unit Elite Commando Team, composed of the four badasses we're about to see in a bit, hellbent on not only infiltrating enemy territory, but also liberating and accompanying POWs from concentration camps, in two-armed jeeps no less. And upon starting, that opening statement does not lie. This battle will literally, and I do mean literally, make your blood boil. Having our noses set to the grindstone with the traditional gameplay aspect, it's much more than just your typical standard military-themed running gun, or in this case, a top-view jeep and gun, in the style of SQ Playmore's Iron Tank, or Guerrilla War, meets Dan Gorland's Choplifter, where you're in command of half the entire squadron. In each area, you're endlessly eradicating and or evading every foe in your path via both a one-way machine gun, which travels only north, regardless of your current direction, and a grenade, or later a bazooka, which, unlike the former, travels in all eight directions, both of which are deployed by a B and A, respectively. In terms of enemy lineup, you've got two types of lone infantry soldiers, one that attacks neutrally with only his bazooka, and another that attacks while on the move with a rifle. Oh, and here's the really bitchin' part. Both can be run the hell over. Yeah, that's right, go fuck yourself. Up yours, jackass! Various artillery and vehicles ranging from 50mm cannons, sniper rafts, troop transports, gunner boats, missile launchers, four types of tanks, three of which are the most common, namely the Panther, one in brown and another in blue, and the Quicksilver, and of course the Extreme Lander, which is classified, choppers, bombers, submarines, all of which will guarantee the chances of your survival are equivalent to a West Indian manatee's genitalia. In other words, shit all. Shifting gears to the POWs, upon nuking any enemy barracks compound, either one or a group of them will start storming out, which must be rescued at all costs. Hell, there's even one that grants you better firepower, hence the earlier recounted bazooka, and the three types of explosive impacts it gives off depending on its level. Now take note of the following. Upon death, you're instantly downpowered to shit all. The more POWs you guide to safety upon reaching the helipad, the more points and lives you earn, and in addition, a fraction of the surviving POWs will appear, which also occurs when your jeep gets trashed. Should you manage to endure every toilsome conflict, a boss skirmish takes place, including but not limited to a squadron of tanks, living Medusa statues, Castlevania anyone, a super colossal submarine with a shit ton of hidden turrets, a ruthless gargantuan rogue chopper, and even a high-powered defense station to name the entire lineup. Shit it roughly. Upon mowing down those goddamn pissant rectal wart licking sons of bitches, you then proceed to the next territorial checkpoint and sew the hell on. As I've pointed out in recent examinations, if you're expecting this myriad of vehicular operations to be child's play, have I got a two-word newsflash for you. Horse shit! Now bear in mind each and every liability and hazard throughout that'll still fuck you over worse than Kane Highwind from Final Fantasy 2 aka 4 and Mad Mardigan from Willow combined, hence the focus of our following customary topic. Now as jarring and as skewed as the control aspect can become, it's rather fluid and far from an excruciating pain in the cojones with which to acclimatize oneself, same spiel with the overall gameplay formula. Concerning Jackal's challenge, apart from everything I've laid down thus far, the most common gripes that many always suffer from, or at the very least tend to, regarding this particular title, include the methodical, yet habitudinous and lurid pacing of your jeep, as it's bound to be left open to any and or all offenses, especially in the latter half, not to mention the immeasurable as fuck hazards at every turn within each corresponding area, for example the gunfire from the aforementioned 50mm cannons, sniper rafts, etc., collapsing pillars, automated wall lasers, hidden gun turrets and explosive mines, falling boulders, a bunch of Molotov cocktails raining down from bombers, conveyor belts, I could fucking go on all day. And even the likelihood of losing a fraction of the POWs you've rescued so far due to an unexpected assault stemming from said perils, thus being left with no other recourse but to gather up yet again those that survived from said attack during your next damn life. Now remember how I said your chances of survival are slim due to these factors? It's no wonder that this game will rape your intellect worse than Takakazu Abe from Kusomiso Technique, Philippe LaRoche from Derailed, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen from Dune, The Kurgan from Highlander, Frank Booth from Blue Velvet, Rest in Peace Dennis Hopper, Freddy Krueger, Pinhead from Hellraiser, and Fritz the Cat combined. 
A nerf is expensive side. You only get four lives, more of which, yet again, can be accrued upon scoring more points depending on both the enemies you've neutralized and the POWs that you've brought to safety. And of course, three continues. And if you're expecting any miracles like Encadro, Life Force, or Gyrus, all of which were released by the same company in the same goddamn year, the latter being published by Ultra, consider yourself piss out of luck. Bottom line, I do whatever the hell is feasible to keep both your Jeep and every POW house within out of harm's way. Otherwise, yep, you guessed it. Although I've heard from a few sources that the graphics are nothing much to write home about, and under some circumstances, I'm in full agreement, honestly. I, on the other hand, might just have to go on record stating the goddamn anti-thesis. Mindless evasive statements aside, they're on about the same level as the three or four mentioned Konami classics, if not accurately, with its rigid yet natural top few foreground elements and trademark explosions amongst all things. While they're not in any way eye-popping, even by today's standards no less, hell, the cutscenes in between levels aren't half bad, notwithstanding how often they tend to repeat themselves. Music and sound-wise, composed and arranged by Atsushi Fujio and Shinya Sakamoto, both of Life Force and YY World fame, amongst various well-known Konami hits, this game's soundtrack doesn't disappoint by even a slight iota. Frenetic and addictive as LSD, Nuke from Robocop 2, Jägermeister, Adivan, and Vicodin combined. But then again, it's fucking Konami we're talking about here, so it should come as no goddamn surprise. The sound effects here, however, run the gamut from somewhat amusing to just downright plotting, shit if the latter not so much. And my top five favorites from this game alone are as follows. The title intro anthem, areas one and four, areas two and five, areas three and six, and finally the boss theme. Replayability-wise, thanks to every key element I've examined throughout regarding both Jackal's primitive-ass gameplay and the steadily balanced yet excruciating-as-fuck challenge, to which, as usual, I cannot stress enough in emphasizing everyone to refer the hell back, and the usual icing on the cake simultaneous two-player mode features, because once again, Konami goddammit. Consider yourself irrational to abandon the semi-overlooked war-themed classic. Therefore, in Dauntless Summation, my final verdict on Jackal, at this juncture, words cannot express how it's been overshadowed by most of Konami's other hits at the time, and that its game length and graphical quality doesn't virtually match up to theirs. In spite of those obvious setbacks, it's still an invigorating and genuine title that I strongly believe many must dive into as often as possible. Must I mention how dirt cheap it is, running us no less than 5 to 15 bucks loose, or between 17 to 55 bucks complete and boxed? I mean, seriously, what the hell are you waiting for? The release of Expendables 4? Track it the hell down like Crate and Ridley, for God's sake. And as always, you won't regret it in the slightest, I assure you. And to the folks at Konami, if you're watching this, just like with Sega and other third-party companies, make a goddamn collection featuring even this title! Anyways, in enhancing my calm a la Demolition Man, and the usual ranting and raving aside, until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God officially and proudly signing off.